Some diseases are caused by simple organisms. These simple organisms can cause sickness or destroy the tissue of the, ho the host organism. And sometimes the disease causing organism can kill the host organism. Several diseases of humans and other animals are caused by, by protozoa. Oh, protozoa. Disease causing protozoa live in the body of fluid or cells in the host. The host provides food and shelter during the growth and development of the protozoa and also provides a protected environment in which the protozoa can reproduce. Disease causing organisms can be spread rapidly from one organism to another as a result of unsanitary conditions or overcrowding. Disease causing organisms may also be spread by insect bites. In this investigation, you are to read the written, the written report made by a biologist and study the data chart compiled by bi biologists in the field. From this data, you are to construct a map showing the spread of the disease. Then you are to decide where the disease originated and the pattern by which the disease spread. Perfect, thank you so much, Jocelyn. So as we just read, today we're going to be looking at the spread of diseases, but we're not talking about coronavirus today, although we'll see that the patterns of which they spread are pretty similar. We're gonna be looking at the spread of malaria amongst birds. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is reading a report that a biologist wrote. Now, this report is on the spread of Plasmodium gallinaceum in a pheasant population. When we see this word pheasants, we're not talking about peasants, okay? We're talking about a type of bird. So a pheasant or bird population. This was recorded from April of 1986 to August of 1987. So this was a little bit, a little while ago, but we'll see that those diseases actually spread in a very, very, very similar pattern. So reading through this biologist's report, can I have, let's see, Eliam, will you read me the very first paragraph that we see here? Biologist reports spread of Plasdonium glycium in peasants' birds population April 1986 to August 1987. In early April 1987, a protozoan parasite identified as Plasmodium gallinaceum. Plasmodium gallinaceum was first as isolated in salivary gland cells of the Celix bird malaria. The mosquito was found in the roadside dish in Region V game, game District. In late April 1986, a blood sample was taken from several peasants in the same game district. One peasant was found to be carrying a stage in the life cycle of P. gallinaceum and several red blood cells. Perfect. All right. Can I have um, Jennifer read me this second paragraph, please? Can you read the second paragraph here? Yes. Am I working this? Yeah, you're working. The presence of aptitudes of the parasite in birds was determined by the test done during the warm months of 1986 and 1987. All peasants. Pheasants tested were live trapped, tagged, and released. At least three pheasants from each quarter kilometer area of the region V game district were tested during each of the sample periods. Areas newly infected with bird malaria were recorded in a data chart table one. Perfect. Samuel, read me this next paragraph. The life cycle of a P. galensium as is as follows. A Culex mosquito bites a bird with mal malaria. Chickens, turkeys, pheasants, and grouse are some of the species that may be affected by this disease. Some protozoa are sucked up uh, in the bird's blood cells that the mosquito takes in. These protozoa then pass along with the blood into the mosquito's stomach where they grow and reproduce. Some of them pass into the mosquito's bloodstream and eventually reach the, saliva, the uh, salivary glands. When the mosquito bites a healthy bird, some protozoa enters the bird's brain. 
These protozoa travel through the blood to the brain, spleen, lungs, and liver, where they grow and reproduce. The symptoms that the bird suffers as growth and reproduction of the protozoa occur are called malaria. Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. So today we're going to be looking at a data table that shows us where these malaria cases were reported. And we're going to document those data points onto a graph, right? That graph is then going to show us the spread of disease over time. So the map on page three represents the region V or region five game district an area that measures five kilometers squared. Now, when you see this phrase game district, we're not talking about somewhere you can go and play video games. Um, this word game is just talking about, again, places where birds are found, typically places where birds are going to be hunted. Um, so game is another word to describe like birds that are being hunted. Okay, so each large block on the map equals one fourth of a square kilometer. Table one right here then shows us six data samples taken at different times. So we're given time samples A through F, but these samples are not necessarily listed in order, in the order in which they were taken. So A is not necessarily the first time sample and F is not necessarily the last. We're going to fill in the areas on the map according to this data. Each color represents the area where new malaria cases were found during each sample. And when we are done, our map is going to have six different colors. And using that information, we'll be able to track the spread of this disease throughout this region five game district. All right, now, if you are working on a computer or if you are working on an iPad, I've got a little bit different instructions for you. So if you are working from a computer, I'm gonna show you guys what to do. You are going to click and drag your cursor over a specific box to highlight the cell. So you're going to just click and drag and highlight that cell. You're then going to go up to the top right and click on the little paint bucket that says background color. All right, you're then going to choose the color that we're given and that is how you will fill in your graph. Now, if you are working on an iPad, your instructions are a little bit different. So instead of clicking and dragging like we just did, you guys are just going to tap on a specific box to select that cell. So when you just tap on your screen, that should highlight the cell for you. Wait, say that one more time. Yes, I will. All right, so again, if you're working on an iPad, just tap that one box. Then look at this screenshot I provided to show you what you're gonna do next. On the top right, you're going to click on this button that has an A on it. That will then open a screen that looks like this. You're then going to click on the table button. That's the third option, the one on the far right. And once you do that, you'll see a screen that says fill color. You're going to click on that button and then choose the color you want to highlight the cell with. Was that able to work for you, Caden? Um, I'm just coloring it. Yeah, okay, so Caden also said, Caden's working from an iPad and said it may be easier to just fill in the color. Like if you have a stylus or if you want to use your finger to just shade in the box, that's fine as well. So please just do whatever is easiest for you. All right, now, Mohamedou asked me to show you guys how to do this on a computer one more time. So again, if you are working on Google Docs, you're going to click and drag over whatever cell you've chosen. You're then going to click up here where it says background color. It's at the top right of the screen. It's like a little paint bucket dripping over. And then when you click on that, you'll open a screen that looks like this where you've got different colors to choose from. So then you'll just click the color that you want. Did that work, Mohamedou? Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get started graphing our data. I'm actually going to pull this open in two different screens. I'll show you guys what I mean. Let's see. All right. 
So I'm going to pull this open in two screens so I can look at my data points on the left and fill in my graph on the right. If you want to do something similar, you are welcome to, or if you just wanna look at the data points on my screen, that's totally fine. Again, do whatever is easiest for you. So let's fill in our first time sample. So for time sample A, we're going to be using the color blue. We're going to fill in, the first section is D3. So you'll see that your graph is actually labeled with letters and numbers. So you're going to go up to letter D, go over to number three, highlight that cell, and then fill it in blue. We're then going to do the same thing for D4. Now I will warn you guys, as we go through this graph together, I am gonna sound a bit like a, the host of Bingo. So just bear with me as I read out all of these letters and numbers. All right, so we just filled in D3 and D4. Now we're going to fill in E3, E4, and E5. So we're gonna highlight those cells and color them all in blue as well. The last sample we're going to color in for time sample A is F3. So I went up to F, went over to three, and then I'm filling that in blue. It looks like what? <laughs> Ian says it looks like a spaceship. It kind of does. This will be high art by the time we're done with it. I think we could sell it as a painting. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in time sample A to show we are done with that one. Right now, you should have six squares filled in on your graph that are the color blue. Now, if at any point I am going too fast or too slow, please just let me know in the chat. I wanna make sure I don't lose anyone. All right, let's move on to time sample B. So this time we're going to be coloring in, coloring in our boxes with the, whoa, I can't speak, with the color red. So I'm gonna highlight cells A6, A7, and A8. And we're gonna color those in red. All right, we're then gonna color in B8, B9, and again, color those in red. Right, we're then gonna highlight cells C9 and D9. Oh wow, and E9 and F9. So highlight all four of those and color them in red as well. All right, then we're gonna highlight F10. We're still coloring these in red. And then we're gonna finally highlight cells G7, G8, and G9. And those are gonna be red as well. All right, so you should have 13 squares that are colored red. Now it looks like that. <laughs> Ian says now it looks like Pac-Man. Let's just continue to, to say what we think it looks like as we add more colors. Dion says it looks more like Sonic. I don't see it. Looks like abstract art. Yeah, I'm with Joseph. I think it looks pretty abstract. All right, let's add some more color to it. So next we're gonna do orange. This is sample C, time sample C, I should say. So the first thing we're gonna highlight is A1, A2, and A3. And we're gonna color those in orange. All right, then we're gonna highlight G1 and G2, and color those orange as well. H1, H2, and H3 are all gonna be orange as well. C1, 
skip over H4 and then color in H5. And then we're gonna color in I2, I3, I4, and I5, orange as well. I'm gonna give you guys about 20 seconds to catch up and fill in any of those missing squares. <laughs> so the red part is like the number ship. Okay. Okay, so Ian says the red part is now the mothership. From the alien planet that are trying to hold the spaceship from going back. Oh my gosh, now we've got aliens involved. They're holding the spaceship from going back. Dion says it looks like a one-eyed monster with orange hair. Sounds like a smile. No, the eyes. Oh, Kim says it looks like a smiley face on the side. A smiley face with orange. <laughs> well, we've got one more color to add. This one's going to be pretty easy. For our yellow time sample D, we're just coloring in F4. So highlight F4 and color it in yellow. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Eunice says it looks like a graph of sample data. <laughs> I agree, Eunice, but I do admire the creativity. All right, guys, next we're going to color in purple. This is time sample E. So first up, we've got D2. Going to color it in purple. D5, D6, and D7 are going to be purple as well. All right, E2 and E6. F5. And then we've got a long string of, of numbers here. We've got C2, C3, C4, and C5 are all gonna be purple as well. Mm-hmm, that'll be important later. Caden says the purple is now enclosing the blue. I wonder what that means. All right. And our last section of data that we're, that we're going to fill in is actually our biggest section of data. Just before you do that, yes. Oh, okay. Ian has to say what it looks like. So now it's like it's setting up a force field. Oh, now it's setting up a force field. Okay. Okay, now I can go on. What were you saying, Mamadou? You got it? All right, let's go ahead and move on to our last time sample. We're going to shade these in with the color brown. So first we're going to color in B1, B2, B3, and B4. Those are all going to be brown. All right, skip over B5, and then we're going to color in B6 and B7. Right, then we're going to color in C1. C6, C7, and C8. D1 and E1. E7 and E8.
F1 and F2. F6, F7, and F8. And then we're almost done, guys. G3, G4, G5, and G6. And the last one you're going to fill in is H4. I'm going to give you guys about 30 seconds to finish filling that one in. Now, the last thing we need to do this with this graph is, of course, give our graph a title. So if you are done filling in your squares on your graph, I want you to go ahead and look at the data that we were given and figure out what should we title our graph? What are we looking at here? It'll take about 30 seconds. And when you've got your title, go ahead and send it in the chat. Give us some ideas that we can start working with. What, not what we're, what, not what it looks like, but what we are, what data are we looking at here? <clears throat> Okay, that's a good start. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's get some titles in the chat. What are we thinking? So we're looking at the spread of disease, right? Specifically, what disease are we tracking? All right, Dion says malaria cases and areas. Let's see if we can be a little more specific there. Okay. Caden says malaria cases in region five. I like this, but can we be a little bit more specific? Okay, game districts. What are we thinking? What is the parasite that's actually spreading malaria? Or the protozoa, I should say. That really long name. What was that hard to say? <laughs> mm -hmm. It was a scientific name. We're looking at the spread of... Yeah, the spread of Plasmodium gallinaceum in game district B. So now using this graph, we're gonna answer some questions about the data that we were given. Right, the very first question is, where do you guys think the very first case of the bird malaria was reported? Where do you think this disease started? Think about what we saw with coronavirus this past year. Okay, why do you say D3? Okay, but... Mm -hmm. But look at the colors, right? Don't the colors mean something important? Oh, and why do you think it's F4, Caden? Yeah, so F4 is actually representing our patient zero. That is the very first bird that was infected or the very first area that was infected with this bird malaria, right? Think about this time last year where we started to see like the very first case of coronavirus in New York City, right? But then it started to spread. So what we're looking at here is F4, that yellow region is the very first case or the very first area where this bird malaria started. So go ahead and let's write that in a full sentence. So the bird malaria 
started in region F4, which was the yellow region. This was the area where the first case was reported. And we can see on our graph that the cases spread out from that origin point. That is not a good sentence. So if you want to say, write yours a little bit differently, that's totally fine. It's still off here. Hmm? I believe so. Miss Collins. Yeah, what's up? I'm um, after like we answer the questions. Can you just make uh, the right side of the screen bigger because I just can't see the thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Is that a little bit better for you? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So number two, we just said that that yellow region is the very first place that we saw the cases reported. But then where did it spread next? What do we think? So if each of our colors represents a time, right, where those cases were measured, where do we think that it spread next? Which color, I should say, which color is the next? Blue, and why do you say blue? Mm -hmm. So like, if, so let's assume uh, the next uh, area was brown. It like had to spread in a really weird shape, but if you look at blue, it's like in the same group, so it goes to what it to its vicinity. Right. Yeah, so Ian said that we see that it's actually pretty close to our yellow origin point, right? So we see that, that those cases continue to spread out throughout the area. Right. What about number three? So after it spread to the blue region, where did it go next? List in order the next two areas into which the disease spread. Where do we think it went next after blue? Purple and brown, Caden says. And why do you say that? Yep, he says that they are closest to the blue region. So the disease then spread into the purple region, which was closest to the blue outbreak. The disease then continued to spread into the brown region. The outbreak continued to grow larger and expand into surrounding areas. Number three was the blue region. Number, oh, I'm sorry, number, that was number two. Number three was purple and then brown. All right, I'm gonna give you guys about 30 seconds to catch up and write down any answers you're missing. Yeah, so we see that it started out in that yellow region, right? Then it spread into blue. Then it continued to spread into purple and then continued to spread even farther into the brown region. And then what do you think happened next? So number four says, can you tell the exact order of areas into which the disease spread after that fourth area? Why or why not? So can we tell if the red or the orange area was infected next? Which one came first? Do we know? It's like the layer. It starts in layer. So then you see the orange and red are like in the same layer. Yeah, so Ian said that, let's see if I can phrase, rephrase what he said. So he said they're kind of spreading out in layers, right? And both the orange and the red sections are in pretty equal layers on either side of that brown outbreak, right? And I'm seeing a lot of no's in the chat. People are saying, no, we can't tell why, right? Because we see that they're both pretty equal outbreaks just on opposite sides of that brown area. What? 
just because of proximity, wherever they were closest to, it continues to spread out. Yeah, right. All right, guys, now the bell is about to ring. So your homework is going to be to finish the rest of these questions on your own. Now, some of them are pretty tricky, but I'm actually very confident that you guys will be able to figure out the answers. Hold on, don't leave just yet, wait for it. I'm actually very confident you guys will be able to finish the or figure out the answers based on what we lived through this past year. Right, so for example, question number eight says, you're given the job of controlling this outbreak of bird malaria. So how would you go about controlling the disease? What is one thing we had to do this past year to control the outbreak of coronavirus? We had to quarantine, right? So that is definitely something you could apply to this example, right? We could quarantine these birds to ensure it doesn't spread any further. All right, guys, so your homework this weekend is going to be to finish questions four through nine. I'm going to leave these questions here in case you want to copy them, but have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye everyone. Have a good weekend and happy Bye. birthday, Apostolos. No, Ricky left. <laughs>